Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. Tonight, this is End Time Headlines, and we are doing a special prophetic update. Um, it's around 7 p.m. Eastern on this Thursday night, July 18th. And I want to welcome everybody to the broadcast again as you guys are hopping in here and taking the time to jump on. Please uh, let me know where you guys are joining us from. Uh, number one, let me know where you guys are joining us from. Number two, if this is your first time joining us, please let us know below there under Facebook Live, under the comments, or if you're watching via by YouTube. Uh, again, we welcome you to the broadcast. If this is your first time, please let us know, again, where you're joining us from, from the location. And if you're new, please let us know by saying I'm new or first-time viewer or whatever the case may be so that we are aware that you are indeed new to the broadcast. So this is going to be a uh, – we're going to do a special prophetic update, guys. Uh, give me about 30 minutes or so. And I want to talk about something um, really that I discussed in one of our previous prophetic updates. Um, we talked about this out of Matthew 24. So if you if you have a Bible, you can turn her with, you, with me. If you don't, um, that's fine as well. But I'm going to be talking about out of Matthew 24, verses 4 through 8. Uh, and I'll reiterate a little bit what I talked about last segment. And then we're going to dovetail it from there and go into the new section here. So Matthew 24, 4 through 8, um, Jesus is expounding on the signs of his coming to the disciples when they ask him, what would be the signs of your coming and the signs of the end of the age? He tells them in verse 4 of Matthew 24, take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many and you will hear of wars and rumors of war and see that you're not troubled for all these things must come to pass. So again, um, the Lord is telling us here that there would be false Christ arise. There would be false prophets arise. There would be deceivers and people being deceived. That would increase as we get more and more to the coming of the end of the age, which we are not there yet, but we're approaching that threshold. Um, we've already seen this with the rise of false prophets and deceivers, such as uh, David Koresh. You had the Jim Jones things, Jim Jones things. You had the, uh, the Roger Applewhite, I believe it was. You had all these uh, these false prophets and these false messiahs that rose up, and they will continue to increase. Uh, we've had wars and rumors of wars. We've had actual wars, and we've had the rumors of wars have uh, had just have just escalated over uh, the many years that many of us and generations that are watching this. And he says, he says, see that you're not troubled for all these things. Those things are, again, the deception, the false messiahs, the false Christ, and the wars and rumors of wars. He said these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, he goes to the next level, and here's this is where we're kind of homing in tonight. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these, now what are these? Again, these in context are famines, pestilence, and earthquakes. All right? Because he's already covered this first section. Now he's going to another, he's going to the next phase of this thing. And he says there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are are the beginning of sorrows. Now, if you're just joining me tonight in this segment, um, about a week or two ago, we covered this same text of Scripture of Matthew 24, and we talked about earthquakes in diverse places. We did a whole segment on when those two major earthquakes struck on the uh, in Southern California on the West Coast, and then we've had a, we've had um, a couple earthquakes that struck in Seattle, Washington. We had one struck off the coast of Oregon. We've had earthquake swarms off the coast of Oregon prior to the earthquakes in California. We saw the Tennessee uh, the state of Tennessee got a little bit of a rumbling yesterday. So what are these are earthquakes in diverse places. 
And on that last prophetic segment, I said, if we are really entering into the final trimester of the birth pangs of the Messiah, then we're not only going to see an increase of earthquakes in diverse places, but we're also going to have to see famines and pestilences. Okay, so again, famines and pestilences. And that's where I want to home in tonight is, again, famines and pestilences. How be it? Really, we want to focus on pestilence tonight and not so much on famine because I could talk about famine and we could talk about the crops in the Midwest and the failures through all the rain damage and the catastrophic rains that we've had just pummel uh, across the nation over through the entire spring months going to the summer months. And now we're getting record breaking heat uh, just today. A report came out and said that last month, the month of June, we saw the hottest uh, June, since record keeping, the hottest June on record we just experienced. Okay, so all, so that that could very well lead lead to crop failures, crop shortages, and and famines. Now, when you go to Revelation chapter six verse eight, again you can see these are stepping stones leading up to. Again, when we get into the tr- the great tribulation, we're not there yet, but eventually when we get there. We know that one of the one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse is he's he's his label is the pale horse, um, and it says in Revelation six eight. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death and Hades, followed with him, and power was given unto him. Or I'm sorry, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, that's war, and with hunger, and with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Now that word there with that word hunger there in Greek, again, the connotation or the connection there is famine. All right? So we see this coming. But let me get up to let me get up here to uh I want to talk about this pestilence. Pestilences. The word pestilence here in Matthew 24 is it gives reference to more of a plague. It's a picture of a plague or a disease, uh, or it could be it could be bacteria, it could be disease, it could be um, some type of pestilence that leads unto death. Keep that in mind when we get into this. And listen what he says. And these are the beginning of sorrows. Somebody say sorrows. That word. Odin in Greek means a time of grieving or a or birth pains. Um, so again, there's different words uh, in the New Testament Greek that mean that has the word for the word sorrow. Okay, but in this connotation, it means a time of grieving or birth pangs or travail, as in the picture of a woman giving birth. Okay, but here's the thing. Everything we see in the natural is a reflection of the spiritual. So here's what's interesting. According to the book of Romans chapter eight, let me turn there real quick. Romans eight. All right, we're going to get to the pestilence here, but I want to I want to talk about this travail or birth pangs. Romans 8, 21 verses 23, it says, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Okay, so again, he tells you, Paul tells us in the book of Romans that prior to the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Messiah, the earth itself will groan and travail producing birth pangs. Now, what does that look like? I'm going to tell you what it looks like. The earth travailing in birth pangs produce these disasters that we are dealing with and seeing manifest in the earth in an unprecedented level. We're talking about an increase of earthquakes, an increase of floods, an increase of volcanic eruptions. By the way, Watch for that coming too, based on uh, based on the book of Revelation, and especially in Joel chapter two. Joel chapter two is a direct uh, passage dealing prophetically with the coming of the Lord and the signs of the coming of the Lord. And he talks about the spirit of the Lord shall be poured out upon sons and daughters. That's the spirit level. That's the spirit 
uh, picture of this, but in the natural, he says there will be signs in the, Let me just turn there real quick. Let me, I didn't plan on going there, but let me, let me go to the book of Joel. Again, this is Joel and I'll probably, if, this is a fairly new Bible compared to my other one. So it's going to be, it'd probably be quicker for me just to talk. Here it is. Joel chapter two. Let me just read this here. It's Joel two going down here to 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And upon my men servants and maid servants, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. Again, this was initiated in on the day of Pentecost, the birthing of the church, Acts chapter two, but it's ongoing and, st and will keep going. Watch until the revealing of the Son of Man. Now watch this. And I will show, now here we go, we transition to the earth. And I'll show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the, before, somebody say before the coming of the great an awesome day of the Lord. Again, that's the coming of the Lord. And that's talking about the second advent, the coming of the Lord or the day of judgment, the day of the Lord, the great tribulation. All right. So again, what's going to happen before that? This outpouring is going to continue. It's going to increase in magnitude. It's going to inc increase in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, an intensity, just like the birth pangs. But he said there will also be, not only will there be earthquakes, but there's going to be blood, fire, and pillars of smoke, which again is a picture of volcanic eruptions taking place. All right. Now, again, based on Romans 8, 22 through 23, the earth is going to produce, watch this again, earthquakes, floods, volcanic eruptions, famines, and pestilences, and they will increase as in travail of a woman. All right. Again, they will increase as a travail in woman. All right. Now let me get on down here. Now, for, if, when you go into the Old Testament, even some of the Old Testament prophets mention when it alluded to the coming of the Lord, they alluded to pa birth pangs, sorrows, and travail. I'm going to go through these pretty quick because I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. Isaiah 13, 8 talks about pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. Isaiah 26, 17 says, as a woman with child is in pain and cries out in her birth pangs when she draws near to the, near to the time of her delivery. And then in Jeremiah 22 through 23, it says, um, how gracious will you be when birth, when pangs come upon you like the pain of a woman in labor. It talks about this in this and from a Hebraic perspective, this travail or birth pangs means to enter into labor or, or fear and trembling. Uh, the travail, again, when you they paint a picture of this, this travail that these prophets talked about precedes the day of the Lord. All right. Or the birth pangs of the Messiah. Now, I want to read some headlines. Again, we're talking about pestilence. Are we seeing the increase of pestilence? Well, we all remember in 2014, most of us will, for 21 months, there was an outbreak of Ebola that was recorded. It began on the 23rd of March of 2014. And when it was all said and done, there was six countries that this spread through. Even There was even some cases that popped up in the United States of America where an individual uh, brought that over here, but they, they was quickly to contain it and quarantine it. But when, all, when it was all said and done, six countries was affected, and the total number of reported cases is 28,637. And uh, from, from the information I gathered, over 11,300 11, individuals passed perished from this Ebola outbreak in 2014. Well, according to uh, all mainstream media reported this yesterday, the, the World Health Organization announced an emergency, international health emergency yesterday when they said that the deadly Ebola outbreak in Congo is now classified an international health emergency. According, to, again, to the World Health Organization, this came as the news of the virus spread to a city 
uh, of a populace of over 2 million people. Guys, that's a lot of people. <coughs> um, more than 1,600 people have now died in this new outbreak since August of this year and this and what is now deemed to be the second deadliest e- oh, Ebola outbreak in the history of this disease. Uh, it is now, uh, this disease is unfolding in a region described as a war zone. A declaration, again, a declaration of a global health emergency often brings greater international attention and aid along with concerns that nervous governments might overact with border closures. So again, this thing is now cl- been classified uh, again, this is a pestilence, don't miss this, a plague leading unto death is now classified a international health emergency. So this is something that's making headlines. Now let's talk about something that is on the minds of everybody. It's been on the, the, the lips of many individuals in the, United States, in the United States of America, especially those of you that live on the East Coast of the United States of America. This flesh-eating bacteria that's taking headlines, uh, which is called, again, necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis, uh, which is a rare flesh-eating bacteria, has been popping up on the east coast of the United States. And at one time, this was considered to be rare. You rarely heard about it. You didn't hear many cases about it at all. But in 2019 of this year, we're seeing the the rate of these being reported is just off the charts. I mean, every time you turn on the news, I know here on End Time Headlines, we have been reporting this almost multiple reports every week of this taking place, uh, of this this flesh-eating bacteria. I want to give you some uh, some stories here about this. Uh, in Tennessee, recently, a Tennessee man, or I'm sorry, not in Tennessee, but a Tennessee resident was just recently killed by a flesh-eating bacteria after one trip to Florida, to the, to the Florida panhandle. According to his testimony of his daughter, she said about 4 a.m. on a Saturday morning, 12 hours after... They were in the water. He woke up with a fever, chills, and some cramping. They got to the hospital in Memphis around 8 p.m. They took him back immediately as they were helping him get changed to the hospital gown. They saw, and everybody saw this on the news. They had a picture of it, and you could see this thing on his back. Uh, They saw this huge black spot on his back that was not there before. The man's condition worsened over the next several hours. His immune system had been weakened by already by a bout of cancer, and the daughter said by Sunday afternoon, he was pronounced dead again from a flesh-eating bacteria. Uh, here's another story of a woman who had just moved to Florida recently and died after getting a small cut on her leg. While walking along the coast on Anna Maria Island, a woman died two weeks after cutting her leg. While walking along the coast... In an island in Florida, according to her family, her leg became infected with this bacteria commonly, again, is, which is known as the flesh-eating bacteria. Sad, guys. Um, let me go on down here. Here's another one. According to Inside Edition, a 12-year-old girl nearly lost her leg recently after getting infected by flesh-eating bacteria while on a family vacation. Um, just weeks after contracting it, uh, the, I'm sorry, a 12, the 12 year old girl girl was infected with this, um, while she was waiting, listen to this. She was waiting in the ocean. How many's done this guys? We go on vacation with our family, with our friends. We're out there on the beach. We're, we're picking up seashells. We're playing. We're walking along the beach. Everybody takes off their shoes. They wade in the water. They walk in the beach. They walk. They like the, the feel of the sand between their toes, and they just wade out in the water and let the, the water you know, come, you know, come up on their feet. Here's a little a 12-year-old girl wading in the ocean on vacation with her family. And just a few days later, 
She arrives in back to she arrives back in Florida, her leg hurting and running a fever. Her mother took her to the doctor after her temperature spiked to 104.5 degrees. The physician then sent her straight to the hospital. But there, again, she was diagnosed with, you guessed it, this flesh-eating bacteria. All right? And they said, thankfully, she lived because they caught it in time. Okay? Now, here's another story. A woman recently, just 10 minutes in the water, just 10 minutes in the water in Virginia Beach, at a beach in Virginia. I don't want to say Virginia Beach. Let me correct that. At a beach in Virginia, Amanda Edwards can laugh today thinking back on her potentially fatal health scare after spending just 10 minutes in the water at a Virginia beach. And she said, quote, I was like, oh my goodness, my leg is going to fall off. Edwards chuckled. That's the only thing I could keep thinking. She told WTKR she contracted a flesh-eating staph infection during a day of fun at Norfolk, and that's again, that's in Virginia, Ocean View Beach. She said the infection spread quickly. In another instance, a young boy, after taking a trip to a beach in Maryland, discovered red spots all over his body the next morning. <coughs> Um, after after a, a trip to the beach in Maryland, quote, a woman went on to say that a trip to Maryland Beach left her son covered in wounds from a flesh-eating bacteria. The Daily Times of Salisbury reported uh, that, uh, that this woman declared that her son went swimming off the coast of Ocean City and had red spots all over his body by the next morning. And again, This was considered to be exceedingly rare to see any cases at all along the Delaware coast. But according to Scientific American, one recent report noted five severe cases. The report author described five cases of severe flesh-eating bacteria infections in people who were exposed to water or seafood from the Delaware Bay, which sits between Delaware and New Jersey. All right. Again, these infections are historically, when you do the research, these are rare. But for some reason, come on, they're increasing. I mean, it's getting to the point where people are developing a phobia to even go to the ocean. They don't want to go to the beach. And it's not just the oceans, guys. It's rivers. One individual was kayaking in a river. And he claimed that he never stepped out of the kayak or the boat, whatever he was in. He never got out of the boat, but simply by the oar, I guess, splashing up on him, he contracted this flesh-eating bacteria. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about the birth pangs of Matthew 24. Again, let me go back up here. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes. In various places, or your King James says in diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Now, before we close this broadcast, I want to give you a little bit of a picture, a description of of where we're at, I believe, prophetically speaking. Because you see, in the natural speaking, there are three trimesters. Every woman that's watching this broadcast that's ever given birth will know what I'm talking about. There's three trimesters to a birthing. There's You have the first three months, the second three months, and the third three months. And here's the deal with this. Because when you talk about these things, you're going to get skeptics, you're going to get scoffers, and you're going to get those who are hungry to know the signs and the times in which we are in. Okay, but here's the thing. The skeptics and the scoffers will always say this has always happened. These are nothing new. We've seen these things. They come in cycles. They come in seasons. They come in patterns. But here's the deal. See, the first three months of a tr- of the f- the first trimester of a pregnancy the first 3 months this is the exciting trimester 
Come on. This is the trimester when, when the woman takes pictures, she takes selfies, come here and fill my stomach. Oh, can you hear the baby? Can you, can you hear him? Uh, you get to go do, you, you get to go and uh, you, you have a celebration. You make preparations. You begin to make arrangements for the child. You go begin to clean out the room. You take stuff out. You put stuff in. You paint the room. You put pictures up. You begin to do all these things. Why? Because you're making preparations. Hello, for the deliverance you're making preparations for the birthing okay then you have the second trimester now things begin to shift they begin to change this we enter into the second three months now it's interesting because now a whole new uh, set of symptoms come on. And this is what's called the golden period. Uh, this is what they call the golden per period of pregnancy because many, listen to this, of the unpleasant effects of early pregnancy disappear. In other words, come on, the honeymoon phase of the, of the birthing passes of the excitement and now we get into a whole new set of symptoms now comes the pain now comes the anguish now comes the cramping now comes the sorrows come on everybody can get excited about jesus everybody can get excited about the coming of the lord everybody can get excited about the signs of the coming of the lord until it begins to make you a little bit uncomfortable until your region gets shaken with an unusual earthquake until you get hit with a megos or mega quake until you start seeing flesh eating bacteria start showing up on the beach of the shores of your ocean and your favorite vacation place that you like to swim until come on somebody until wars and rumors of war get to the point where it's starting to affect your checkbook oh it's exciting when you can have your bible study and you can stand up and you can talk about the signs of the coming of the lord and take selfies with people at prophecy conference and and excite and and be excited and 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 talk about these things but it's another thing when you start feeling the pinch of the birth pangs Oh, but then we go to a, uh, then we go into what is called the false labor pains. Come on, ladies. Can I get an amen? If anybody's ever gave birth to, to, to a child or children, you know what I'm talking about. You, you think you're entering into the third trimester, but, but it's, but it's, it feels like it is. It kind of looks like it is. You, you, your emotions are kind of rocking and swaying. And it's almost like you're going through all the symptoms of what is to consider to be a real birthing pain. Pain, but in fact, it was what's called a false labor pain. Now, guys, we've seen this. We had the rise of many individuals, even all the way into the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, the invaded Jerusalem, and he began to he slaughtered a pig and put it on the altar. He stopped the sacrifices. This many individuals in that time believed that he was the Antichrist who which was to come. But friends, he he came, he went, he was not, and thus it was a false labor pain. The Messiah didn't come, he didn't show up, he didn't reveal himself, he didn't come on, he didn't split the eastern sky. Then we had the rise of Nero and Nero pretty much did the same thing as Antiochus Epiphany. He did the same thing. And again, during that generation, here's the Antichrist. This has got to be the Antichrist. We are the generation that's going to see these things that come to pass. But a friend, again, it was a false labor pain. Then you saw the rise of Hitler. You saw the rise of Adolf Hitler and uh, Mussolini and Stalin. And you see these dictators you, and, and it was a false labor pain. Then when he went, we went into the Gulf War. We went into the Gulf War with Bush Sr., with Saddam Hussein. And we said, this is it. This is it. The coming of the Lord's at hand. But it was a it was a false labor pain. Then we had then we had the Y2K incident that took place. Oh, and it was a false labor pain. Then we had the 2012 scare. Come on. Of the Mayan calendar prediction and the gloom and doom prophecies of 2012. Well, guess what? 2012 has come and gone seven years and we're still here. Why? Because these were not the final Come on, we, these were not the final birth pangs of the Messiah. These were only false labor pains. But friends, when we get into the final, I can't tell you emphatically, I can't be dogmatic and tell you that we are in the third trimester. But I'm going to tell you, when we get into the last three months of the birthing process, in the natural, this is when the shortness of breath comes. This is when the sleeping uh, deficit, uh, 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 deprivation comes come on sleeping problems comes 
you can't sleep. There's shortness of breath. You can't sleep. Symptoms arise and they increase. Come on, as the uterus begins to expand, as it begins to to prepare, come on, for the drop of the of the male of the of the child to come and to be birthed in the position of this. So again, this is the third and final trimester. And then eventually before the the birthing takes place, the water has to break. Come on. And most cases after the water breaks, Contractions usually follow within 12 to 24 hours. And then at that point, come on, the, that which is going to be birth is well underway. Friends, again, based upon what's in the natural, based on the descriptions of what is written in the Greek, what is, what is described in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, it's mentioned over here in Thessalonians, it's mentioned in Matthew 24, it's mentioned in Luke 21, it's mentioned in Mark 13. These birth, it's mentioned in Romans chapter 8, all, it's over 30 times just in the New Testament alone, it talks about the, 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 the travail and the birth pangs. So based upon these pangs, patterns alone and the connotation of this my friends i think it's safe to say that we as the body of christ we as those who have the discernment of the sons of issachar that know and can distinguish and discern the times of the coming of the lord we will know that we are near the birthing of the messiah of mashiach of yeshua when he's about to come and based on this friends i'm going to tell you something i can emphatically tell you that famine pestilences and earthquakes are going to increase on in levels they're going to increase in intensity they're going to increase in magnitude they're going to increase and in the amount of them that's taking place it's going to begin to shatter records it's going to break uh previous records it's going to baffle scientists it's going to baffle seismologists it's going to baffle the world health organization these things are going to perplex the world but come on to uh, the the bible says in the book of daniel that as we enter into the time of the end the wicked will not not know what's happening but it says that those who know the Lord those who are in covenant with him they will know what's taking place they will have discernment and I'm friends I'm gonna tell you something here's what I'm excited about you think I'm excited about all these things you think I'm excited I know there's some Christians out there that that really they they don't know what spirit they're speaking of. Remember when Jesus was coming, he was passing through the area of Samaria, and he, and Peter, James, and John, or the sons of Zebedee were with him, James and John, and they said, "Lord, let us let us cast fire down from heaven and kill them all." And Jesus turned to them and rebuked them and said, "You know not what spirit you're speaking of. For the Son of Man came to save men's lives, not destroy them." So don't wish evil upon our brothers and sisters. I said on our, there is brothers and sisters in California. There's brothers and sisters in Washington. Believe it or not, there is righteous people in every city in America. So don't you wish destruction on them. Don't you wish that California would fall off into the ocean because there is some praying, travailing, God-fearing, come on, believers, even on the West Coast. So you know not what spirit you're speaking of. So I'm not excited about destruction. I'm not excited about famines. I'm not excited about earthquakes. I'm not excited about these things. But again, based upon our Lord's words in Luke 21, 28, he said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption is drawing near. But you know what excites me is based upon the birth pangs. Friends, I believe if Joel 2 Come on, 28 through 30 says that in the last days I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. If this began in Acts chapter 2, that was the former reign. Come on. And then the book of James. Let me turn there real quick. Come on. I'm going to close right here in the book of James. This is what it's always been about, guys. It's right here in the book of James. James chapter 5. Listen to this. Watch this. There, verse 7, James 5, 7. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Well, friends, I'm going to tell you again, the early rain 
has already fallen. It began, it, it was initiated in Acts chapter 2. Come on, it began to fall, and it's been falling, pockets of it. Just because we don't see revival on an unprecedented level of an awakening, like a third great awakening here in America, doesn't mean that God is still not pouring out His Spirit. It doesn't mean revivals are still not taking place. We reported about one in Georgia that's happening. Uh, we've, we have one, we've had multiple revivals break out over the years. God is still pouring out these pockets, these downpours, these outpourings are still taking place in pockets out inside the United States and even outside of the United States but based on James chapter 5 come on the Lord is long suffering and wills that none perish but all come to repentance and to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the, se- the, the souls are the precious fruit of the earth And I'm going to tell you, the farmer here is the Lord and he's waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. He's waiting, come on, for the former and latter rain. So I'm telling you, guys, the water has not broke yet. But when it does, I predict based on this passage of scripture and many others that we are going to see an outpouring like we have never seen before. Now, it may not happen in your city. It may not happen in your church, but the Bible says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Because here it is, guys. How many times have you driven in a storm, gone out on a stormy day, or gone out somewhere, and you are literally standing, there's clouds all around you, black, ominous clouds, and you're standing there, and you're dry as a bone, but literally 400 feet across the street it is raining so hard there's an outpouring that's taking place so hard that there's no visibility across the street and everybody across the street is getting soaked by the rain but you're dry as a bone i'm trying to tell you friends don't look for a utopia in the end days don't look for this i don't believe there's going to be a worldwide outpouring i don't i've always said that i believe it's going to be pockets There's going to be an outpouring here where the hungry are, where the desperate are, where the intercessors are, where they've been crying and fasting and praying and they've been crying out for a move of God. You're going to hear about it. You're going to see it. You're going to, you're going to step in that cloud because here's the thing about a cloud, guys. It's like a move of God. A move of God is like a cloud. A cloud comes and a cloud goes. A cloud will be here today and it may linger around for 10 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, or for a, for a, a period of time, but eventually the cloud is going to dissipate. It's going to move on. So it, it can rain all around you and you never get wet. I don't know about you, friends, but I'm excited. And you say, you're excited about pestilences? No. I'm excited. Listen, somebody says, we get this all the time, especially with our ministry. They say, well, I don't like your ministry because it's all gloom and doom and despair and negative and bad news. Well, listen, it's gloom, doom, despair, negative and bad news if you're on the wrong side of the tracks, if you're on the wrong side of heaven, if you're on the wrong side of a covenant with the Lord. But friends, I've got good news for you. If you're in Him, in covenant with Him, your name's in the Lamb's book of life, you're abiding in Him, you're in His Word, you're covenant, you're in covenant it with him and you're in fellowship with him friends these are not the best these are not the worst of days these are the best days these are the glorious days of the for the kingdom of heaven is here it's among us and it's time for the sons come on and the daughters of the most high to rise up and proclaim the same message that john the baptist proclaimed and it was the message of repent For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So again, End Time Headlines, guys, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. That's going to be our main website. If this is, again, your first time joining us, please subscribe to us to get push notifications. If you're watching this by YouTube, 
P please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click on the bell there and you'll get notified every time these are uploaded to the YouTube, to the, our YouTube channel. You guys that are watching by Facebook, again, subscribe. You can go to the link below, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. There's a link right there on Facebook Live. You can click on that link right there under where it says follow and support us. And it's going to take you to our homepage. There you can subscribe to our daily digest. You can subscribe to push notifications. And if you'd like to support this ministry, if this ministry is a continual source of blessing, of edification, transformation, revelation on a weekly basis, and you would like to partner with us or sow a one-time gift or whatever the Lord puts on your heart, uh, we want you to be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord and, and do that. And you can do that by clicking that link below. Again, all of our messages are free. This message on YouTube, free. You, you see that there's no, we don't even, there's no ads on our YouTube channel. Because we, we don't get paid for that. We just we want to get the gospel out. We want to get this message out. It's free of charge. No subscription fees. No CDs, DVDs, no materials, no books. None of that. All we ask you to do is be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. Because I believe He's speaking to people out there. And you know who you are. To, to, that you're blessed weekly by this ministry. Just, uh, just be obedient to the Lord as you give uh, generously to the work of the Lord. So we love you guys. We appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you for coming on tonight for this special prophetic update. Uh, again, you guys on YouTube as well. And again, I want to welcome all of our new viewers. Thank you for taking time out. We hope that you enjoyed this segment and, and stick around guys, because we don't just do Bible prophecy. We do practical words. Um, we give words of exhortation and edification and encouragement as well throughout the week. So we will, we're going to come off today off the segment um, we will probably, uh, we may be back on here tomorrow. If not, if we don't come back on tomorrow, then we will be back on here on Monday, uh, with a word, uh, that we feel like we want, that we feel like, I feel like that, uh, the Lord is putting on my heart to release to you through a devotional word or another prophetic, prophetic update. So until then, um, let me give you a quick announcement. July 27th, that's a Saturday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be back for our monthly gathering in Cordon, Indiana at Cornerstone uh, Community Church there in Cordon, Indiana with Pastor Tyson there uh, and with uh, with his church. Uh, we're looking forward. We're excited about that. And again, that's a Saturday night service, 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, we will be broadcasting that live via by here on our end time headlines page. And they're also going to broadcast it on the cornerstone page as well. So we're looking forward to gathering together with, say, if your guys are coming, any of you guys in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, or within driving distance, come on up, come on out, be a part of that. Uh, and you will be blessed by a time in the Lord. So until, until either tomorrow or Monday, guys, uh, we'll see you then. God bless. Amen.